Hey guys, um, finally back to another Road Racing Hub in the NAPRA. Um, joined by Forza, Torino, and uh, Supreme. Um, these, the, these are the executives. And what we were talking about was since um, we changed the point system this season, we were talking about flaws and how the other point systems worked and everything like that. So no, Torino, or Supreme, what I was saying was, and this is what confused me with the chase system in real life. So you know how... The point system Forza one is just just won his championship in. No one else in the championship four had a chance. It was just him. It was like the Winston Cup. But then, like if it's like the Winston Cup, yes, it does show a lot of dominance. You know, if no one's able to even get in enough point within points of you, like Jeff Gordon won the 2001 championship like one or two races before the final finale, because he was so ahead in points, no one was able to catch up no matter what they did. Um. That, obviously, yes, it shows dominance. That's what Forza did. But, and this is what confused me with the chase system. It shows dominance, but it doesn't. It takes one win to get into the playoffs. But then, once you go... If you're doing, like, a Kyle Larson, you have a bunch of people in the playoffs. Some of them are get lucky, or some of them don't deserve it. Like, you can do really good in the playoffs and shitty in the regular season. You can do really bad in the regular season, not even deserve to be in a playoff spot because you did so bad. But then in the playoffs, you pop off like, like Tony Stewart. When he won the championship in 2011, he did pretty bad in the regular season, and then he made the playoffs and he just took off. And I don't, I'm not trying to discredit his championship, but like after that, once you get to the championship four, it evens everything out. Show, it shows dominance there because if you're a championship leader like Forza, he had such a huge points lead. Like if he did that this season, going into the championship, he had such a big points lead. If he did, if he does have a big points lead, and you go into the championship four. Like, enough to where, you know, you would win it no matter what. But in this season, with the new point system, for us, it resets points in the playoffs or in the championship. So it goes from him dominating or someone dominating a full season in regular season and everything, like Edwards, and then someone in the playoffs comes out of nowhere, like a hot shot rookie, and just takes their glory and wins a championship because it resets for the playoffs. It shows dominance. The chase system shows uh, – I kind of took this everywhere – the chase system shows dominance, like the Winston Cup, but it also doesn't. It's confusing how it works. Again, because you can go, we can lead the points all season, and then in the championship, they're all reset. It's like Daytona. It all resets, like the 500. And then if you get second behind someone that did garbage all season, you have eight wins, they have two wins. And they win the championship because of that. Like, it shows dominance. Like, you need to do really good that last race. You need to stay ahead of those four, or those other three drivers. That shows dominance in the championship four. But it doesn't show dominance for the other drivers. I don't know if you got what I meant by that. Wait, but it's like... Uh, forces forces uh, waiting one day, whenever it happens, for, for all the people who are, who are in the final I, four, they all be announced. I want to know. I want to know. What's, I want that day to happen. It'll probably it'll probably end up being uh person who has the most wins or something. Run at that point of their DNF because usually it'll probably if the if the first person that DNFs will probably be like a no shot. That's Whoever that's true. DNFs first, that'll probably what it ends up being. Do you guys get what I mean though by that? Yes, I do. But um, I would say is you know, I mean, I'm not mad at the point system. The point system's yeah. fine, honestly. Like the win in your end system. I like, hate that. Man, how do I piece this? Okay, so like, you can win. Like, you can have a bad season, and then have that one good race, and you win. Like you know, Almarola, that season where he was pretty bad. He was twenty eighth in points, but then you won New Hampshire. Yeah, you won New and Hampshire. Playoff, and he got first rounded. But uh, like, you're, ba you're basically doing well in the playoffs when it like you're winning like if you're bad, bad in racing but you're good in the playoffs you're winning you're doing good when it matters most for you to get a championship not saying that it's like it's deserved but it's kind of deserved because you're doing well in that situation but it would be yeah. unfair to the person that's been dominant the whole season yeah and that would be more deserving but that's just how i that's just how i see it I'll, I want to go back to something real quick, and this kind of helps me explain that. So Forza said if someone is dominant, they can still get cucked out, out of the championship with the system. And I'm talking like the chase. 
So again, you can be down in all the regular season in the large majority of the playoffs. And you go into the championship first in points by a mile, country mile. Got a big points lead going to the championship. But everything resets, so it goes all back to zero. And then you can lose by like a car length to, you know, a driver that's won two races and you've won five or plus, or five or more. And you lose a championship. It shows dominance. Like, you need to do good that really that last race. That's like, that's the race you want to do best at. Like, you you need, it shows dominance for the, it shows dominance for the people that deserve the championship, to be honest. The ones that do good. I'll say that. It shows dominance for the ones that deserve the championship. But the ones that come into the, that pop off in the playoffs that don't really deserve the championship as much as others, like Stewart. I think Edwards deserved it more because Stewart just came out of nowhere in the playoffs. I'm not, again, not trying to discredit him. But Stewart, I don't think Stewart deserved it as much as Edwards. But then Stewart went out there and won it because he just took off in the playoffs. And that's a short, I mean, it's a decent portion of the season, but not the regular season. So that's why I think you get, you have to show dominance, but you also don't in the chase system. I, I, I guess if you're like a, if you're a top contender, you need to show more dominance than the other people. I don't really think that makes sense, but I don't know really how else to explain it. Um, Torino, you have anything to say on that? Okay, I guess he's not here. Um, so do you guys trying to track down a some big ass bug that's flying around in my in my <laughs> living room? I'm hearing a bunch of zzz, and I don't okay. know where. The, where Let us know what it is. I want to see what that is. Okay, um, anyway, you guys want to talk about, like, you guys want to look at our old point system versus our one now? I've already been through this, this type of, um, what you call it. Um, I don't like the old one, because, what, I mean, although you, as far as also said, every, every uh, system has their, has their pros mm -hmm. and their cons. Every system has their pros and their cons. Um... Yo, what the hell is that noise, man? The bug? Yo, I don't know where this noise is coming from. I'm, I'm gonna, for the um, podcast, I'm gonna bring up the old point systems. The, the all-out point system and the battle for the cup point system. Okay. So we look at the all-out. So, obviously, um, eight drivers make the playoffs. If you win, you get 70 points, 5 playoff points, 2nd, 65, 4 playoff points, so on and so forth. You guys can see this right here. And then playoff system, 30 points for 1st, 5 playoff points, 26 for 2nd, 4 player points. So it's a very simple system. And then we look at the one now. Um, it, does diff it does have some differences. It's more complex, I guess you could say. But it's also simple at the same time. So this says making the playoffs is based on regular season points. There will be no playoff points for this system. And then points reset only for the championship round, meaning all four drivers have an equal chance at the last race of the season. So just like the last season, there is no win you're in. Winning obviously helps you a lot, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're in the playoffs. You could win Daytona and win another race, like within the next few weeks of that, and then do really bad the rest and miss the playoffs for like one or two spots. That's because you're not you're not consistent enough. Um, you got to have consistency in this system, which I think is why the Winston Cup system was better because i think it showed dominance and consistency this the chase system i think only shows dominance not so much cons it kind of means the same thing though it doesn't show regular season consistency necessarily again i don't even know how to explain the chase system it's odd okay anyway number three points will be given out i think what was it i think i killed what i wanted to kill what was I got it, so now I want to be as anxious now, so now I can speak really. What was it? What was it? What was it? It, it looked like a cockroach or something. Oh, or a, or a house wasp or something like that. Ugh. Okay, luckily, number three. It was, luckily, it was uh, behind the window blinds, so it oh, would yeah. not come out at me, so I could kill it through there, and the dead carcass would dry up. Hopefully, I killed mm -hmm. it and squished it. I don't know. I'm not hearing anything now. So it says points will be given out for pole position and fastest lap in the race. So this is when qualify. This system actually means qualifying matters. The last system qualifying didn't matter. You can start at the back just by doing a bad run. It doesn't matter. So now we actually show this system actually shows you for us 
that the pol or qualifying does matter, not just for race position, but for points. You get bonus points for pole position and fast lap in the race. So if you have the fast lap in the race and the pole, you get like two times bonus points. So that's really it. Um, so yeah, let's look at the regular season point system. Um, 100 points first, and then 90 points to second, and then it goes down by five until you get to six. So it's so you you get a good amount of more points when you win versus the other positions, but it's not like it's not too much of an advantage. Um, regular season point system for D3, it's a lot different. Obviously, it's 25th on down for stages because that's only stage points. So okay, any, everything like this. So like yeah, right here the normal point system. This is the regular point system for D1, D2, and stage three for D3 since D3 does stages. Um, all that. You know, Battle for Cup, this stuff, same thing. So, I personally think this new system's better. Um, but that doesn't mean the last one was bad. I just think this one's better. Um, so, what do you guys necessarily think? So, Bream says, here's what our, here's what our systems says. do that work. If you're not active, you won't make it far in points, which is true. And if you're not consistent. Um, it doesn't ba unbalance the active people to the dominant people. Like where someone who isn't a dominant driver but is active wins. But it nullifies that effect. Uh, you're active but you're rewarded less because you're not winning or getting constant top threes, top fives. Our system prevents that really well, which it does. Um, but it doesn't protect well against dominant drivers. Where they can have a grass one championships early. Only season two prevented that. In which I don't know if I still have the old point systems. Like save. I think it. I think it uh, protects the, the dominant drivers when it's time for the championship. Because as as uh, as we planned previously, the points were reset during the championship, right? So everybody would have an equal playing field. Um, it would just depend on who who is good at that track and who uh, it it would all come down to uh, skill and maybe luck if uh, if it if, if the finish is wild. So the my only reason wanna... season two prevented that is because the points resetted, and that season, just, just like it will this season. Yeah. I guess that, I guess that's what uh, yeah that that's what he meant. So I want to bring and... it back. Go ahead. You were saying. Go ahead. You you finish. Go ahead. And as, as uh, uh, and that's basically um I guess part of what we decided to I wasn't here during season two I came in like during I guess when it was season four for for d1 um that was uh we agreed on that was uh one of the uh, part of the the um the policy or whatever um the, how, how the new playoff system and new point system would work so again it would give everybody an even playing field and um everybody would have equal uh equal shot and it would all come down to skill and luck if the finish is wild yeah so i want to tie something back quickly to, i'm going to tie this to real life because i don't think in the league it necessarily matters as much but you'll see in real life obviously winston cup system it did not have playoffs um and now it's playoffs so i like the fact that points reset in the championship, but I don't. Um, I do because it shows dominance, and I don't because it shows too much in a way. Um, you mind elaborating? Like, I say it shows too much in a way because it shows that the leading driver, or the best driver, the ones that deserve it the most, need to be completely dominant that last race. They need to be up front, like top three, the whole race. Like, it's too much. Um... Um, and then, you know, I like it because it does show that dominance. I don't like it, and I like it because it shows too much and not enough dominance. And I'm saying not enough sometimes. This is sometimes. It doesn't show enough for these lower drivers sometimes. Like, not, I'm trying to think of a championship battle where, or championship in real life where it did show that. Orbit can I, oh, I, I do want to say this. Jeff Gordon's my favorite driver. And he did really good in 2015. He was consistent. He was like Chase Elliott in 2016. He was, or in, in 2017. 
he would get so many top 10, top 5 finishes, but he could just could never win. And he won once, selling himself in the 2015 championship. He had one win versus, like, four-plus wins compared to, like, Kevin Harvick. And, obviously, or and Kyle Busch. So, you had Jeff Gordon, like, I, get, I believe going four, fourth place into that championship for all the points reset. And you have Kyle Busch, like, I don't know how many wins he had. But I know someone had a lot more wins than Jeff Gordon in that championship. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, for some in some circumstances, the the third and fourth driver usually in the chase format that gets locked in the championship can be consistent at a certain to an, a certain extent. But when it comes to the championship, I guess like. Again, if you have one win versus like someone with six wins, their first in points are fourth, but you beat them in a championship. Um, I don't want to say it's not deserving, but they deserve it so much more that it's showing too much dominance because the other drivers that aren't doing too good or haven't done too good just get a lucky shot or just a couple good races to lock themselves in. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to elaborate it. Like... So and that's why again, I, I almost um, I, I love the atmosphere of the playoffs. Don't get me wrong, I love the atmosphere of the playoffs and everything, but I almost think it's better without the playoffs just because you I I don't know like I want people to be dominant and I want people to I want upsets obviously that's what makes NASCAR NASCAR, but I don't think an upset in the championship for a reason like that is good for the sport. Like Jeff Gordon, yes, it would have been good if he won the championship because he's a big time driver. But if like Chase Briscoe made the championship this season with like two wins, one or two wins, could versus like let's say Denny Hamill with like seven or whatever. So if Denny is first in the championship, seven wins, and you got Briscoe with two and fourth, if he just dominates Miami or not Miami Phoenix, if he dominates Phoenix like he did or like he did really good earlier this year, and he wins Phoenix and wins a championship. I don't want to say he doesn't deserve it because he did good in the playoffs. But um, Hamlin would deserve it more because he did better throughout the whole entirety of the season. And that's why I think the Winston Cup is better because it doesn't have playoff where points reset. You know? Like, it just points never reset. You just go, go, go. You've got to be good the whole season, not just the playoffs. Like the Chases. We've got to be good the whole season consistent, not just all right in the regular season and consistent in the playoffs. I, like, that's what I think. Um, so yeah. Well, if, if the majority of people favor the Winston Cup, uh, which, uh, okay, Supreme saying, and also with the season five point system, I'm going to use Snow as an example. He missed the first two races. Uh, for this season, it would be hard for him to make a championship four again, unless if the the drivers at the top miss races. Honestly, half of the people aren't missing a lot of races. Torino missed less than five races. You mean? Oh, oh, you said less than five. I think the only race I missed was um at Indianapolis. That's mm -hmm. the only uh, race I missed. Um, fours I missed four. Supreme missed two, etc. A lot of active drivers are at the top. If Snow continues to risk, miss races, it's going to be hard for him to repeat his season four success unless if he it goes on a Forza, what you call it, tier. Unless the system does what it should do, make things a lot closer and reward activeness a bit more. And um, isn't that isn't that what we isn't that what the system was designed to do? Or I, I guess I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm missing something. Missing something uh, out. I didn't even read through it. Okay, let me read through it. Um, yeah. So Supreme says, also with the Season 5 point system, you know, this is the first season. Technically, we used the all-out system since Season 1. We just edited a bunch, like the Chase system in real life. It's been edited so yeah, much. But anyway, we, we take it that we got, we said, we said, screw the, your, we said, we said, screw the, uh, the one win locked in uh, type. Mm -hmm you call it we said screw that the only thing we're going to keep is um during the championship four points reset that yeah. was it otherwise so it's just the same as last season so before i go on with reading i again i want to go back to this if you look at the chase system when it came in in 2004 versus now it is entirely different but it's still the same system 
that's what the all-out system was. And season one is entirely different than what it was last season. But then this season we decided to do a full makeover. Like the Gen 4 to the COT, built from the ground up. We just wanted to just redo the whole thing from scratch. Um, so just take that in mind. Or keep that in mind. Okay, so Supreme says, also with the Season 5 point system, I'm going to use Snow as an example. He has missed the first two races of the season. It would be hard for him to make the championship four again unless the drivers at the top miss races or well and they just don't do consistent or don't <clears throat> consistently do really well um and honestly half of those people aren't going to miss a lot of races which is true um torino's missed less than five races last season forza missed four supreme missed two etc i missed a lot uh, i think i missed like six a lot of the active drivers at the top, if Snow continues to miss races, it's going to be hard for him to repeat his Season 4 success unless he goes on a Forza-esque tear, which is doing real good, real consistent, a lot of wins in a row. Because I think Forza won three or four in a row last season. I don't know if that's accurate, though. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so unless the system does what it should do, make things a lot closer and reward activeness a little bit more, um, it's supposed to do that. And he said the only reason why you snow as an example is because he is usually active in the league. Um, so yeah. And that's true. I think this system does show a little more dominance, especially with that big points gap between first and second. And I think that's good because we have a bigger and more active cup field than we've ever had in the league's history. It's only a 15 point gap. That's actually not that big. It can it's, make, Torino can make that up in one race. It's bigger than it's been though. That's what I'm trying to say. Like... If you look at the points gap from the all-out system, from first to second, it's just it's like the rest, like five-point gap. This is a well, I thought it was a ten-point gap. So all-out system, it is a five-point gap between who wins, and this system, it's a ten-point gap between the winner and second. So you got a little more dominance to show, especially with a bigger, more active field. Um, and there is 19 of the 26 races um, are regular season. The other seven are playoff races. And again, so we don't want to make uh, the playoffs, like, take up half the season, obviously. So, uh, what is it, two races? Or three races? Yeah, it's three. Because it goes round of eight, round of six, and then championship. So, yeah, three in each round, and then one for the championship. Um, let's move on for the point system. I think we covered everything we need, to, like, wins the cup, chase system, our systems. I think we moved on from that, or should move on from that. Um... You guys want to talk about? Well, I'm the only one that talks about packages because I'm a nerd. So we'll wait, save that. We I think we've been on. I think we already wrapped up the whole Larry McReynolds type uh, type uh, packages. Not on real racing hub. Anyway, move on. I don't know what I was gonna say. Oh, the like new tracks and different facilities and stuff like edits and stuff like that. Um, Kansas. The only thing we did for Kansas. Well, slap on a new name officially classified as a super speedway. Yeah. Uh, we added in a groove script, but people didn't no, like that, so we got rid of it. What now? I wouldn't really classify it as a full sand. Full sand it's type track. To be. Well, it, it's the not, best. Not even running like a super speedway. It did. See, that's what I don't get. It did in that test we did. You were running two, three wide within a second of each other out of the whole damn 20 laps. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if Torino changed. I don't know if setups I made. I don't know if Torino changed the track friction or something or the setups or whatever. But whenever we did those like three setup tests, it was never the same that it was. One was like 600 degree light, so it was very tight and very spread out. One was just loose, and the other was half pack racing, half not. I don't get how we changed it from the test. Anyway, so Kentucky, um, we didn't change anything with the oval. We just fresh repaved because we made an infield road course. Oh, you just did a repave to a already kind of boring race that we have every year. Is that what we're coming up to next week? I think. Yeah, after Kansas, we go to Kentucky. So yeah, Kentucky's kind of boring. Last season was kind of boring. It isn't a half yeah. bad track though. Like it's like a Pocono. Setups are good, but it's just flat, so it's spread out. Here and in real life as well, personally. I personally think, I think in real life it's definitely bad. Like it could be better. I think of the leak, it's the best we can get it, and I don't. I think it's not much of a entertainment track, as it is a um, strat strategy track, and I don't like strategy tracks in real life as much. 
maybe that was just because of the Gen 6. The Gen 6, for the last, like, three years, was garbage everywhere, pretty much, besides super speedways and, and a good amount of short tracks. Um, so maybe that's just me there. I think it's just because of, the, you know, the Gen 6. Um, they ruined it. Um, like, he's too flat, honestly. It's like, it's kind of like New Hampshire, honestly. Yeah, it's meant to be flat, and it's wide. Um, I think it's a good track, to be honest. I, in Roblox, and in our league especially, um, with the setups we've had this season, like the test, and that's coming up next week, obviously. Um, I think it's good. I just think it's more of a strategic track than it is a make a million passes, battles for the lead stuff. You know, it's. I don't think it's going to be so much of that. I think it's going to be more strategic. Uh, aerodynamics comes into play. I would rather have those races. Makes it hard to pass. Make you actually have to run your line to pass somebody. That's what this. That's what. The, that's what Kentucky's going to be. That's what we're trying to make it. Yes, we're trying to make it fast, and you can dive into corners and have more grip on the corners. But we we don't want it spread out to where it's like two, three seconds between every driver. If that happens. That, that's when it becomes line racing, and that's when it starts to become a snooze fest. When it comes, but when it comes to two to three seconds, I don't mean to interrupt you of a for gap. It. Uh, that's basically how I designed Maryland to be, as Forza was saying. Line short tracks, short tracks are fine for that. That's what I'm trying to say. Like Maryland, I know Maryland was meant to do that, and I like that. It's a short track, but I think mile and a halfs aren't supposed to have a two to three second gap between every single car. That's when it comes to snooze fest. Snooze fest. That's kind of how not that's how old Bristol was, like in the 90s and 2000s. It was a single groove racetrack. There wasn't no a two wide racing. It was single file like a train around the whole racetrack. That's how Bristol was, and sometimes it would get spread out some. That's kind of how old Bristol was. Just not as extreme as Maryland or Kentucky was in real life. What I'm saying is Kentucky and all these other mile and a half shouldn't be like that. Obviously, yeah, we want battles for the lead. That's what the package was made to do. The high downforce one at Kentucky. You want tight cars that are fast and you can get some good grip. But you, we don't want them to race like Charlotte. We don't want them to race like Charlotte. We want this to be a strategic, unique mile and a half race. Um, so again, we have an infield road course and D2 is going to run a roval, actually. There's a pretty fast chicane in the front stretch. So the start finish line was actually... It's kind of like Talladega. It's moved to closer to turn one. I'm not in the middle of triable anymore. Because that chicane, you would have to turn real tight. Tight, like, as tight as Charlotte. But that's, you don't, you don't have to with the Charlotte Roval. Like, it, they could straighten out that chicane. But anyway, you gotta, yeah. The idea yeah. of making Kentucky Roval. Huh? Came to your mind, like, how you got the idea to make the Kentucky Roval. I think, what well, it was kind of my idea. Um, why doesn't D1... Why, you were saying... You, what you were I, saying about what about the Kentucky Roval? How, how, how do we do it? Yeah. yeah and why did uh, D1 have to read there? I forgot who came up with the idea, but... I, I um, did. I, was I think both of us did, actually. Oh, yeah, first first I was worried about the space, because mm -hmm. uh, we didn't space have a lot of space. But Ford managed to draw, draw something out uh, so that I, uh, that I could run through, and uh, it eventually worked out. Um, I think it worked out really good, to be honest. And if if, if SMI did that for Kentucky today, I think it'd make it better. Like, that's yeah. why we did it. I didn't want. I know D1 doesn't race it, but I wanted to. I want a lower division to race the Roval before D1 does. And the reason for that is D1's our big one. The you know the one that's the fastest that usually will try to be the best racing. And I don't want Kentucky the Roval for D1 if we were to race it go to complete crap because it was just a failed test like obviously it may take one to three races to get the roval down or one to three sessions or whatever to get the roval down but i didn't want to i didn't want to run the risk of d1 having a complete horrible utter race at a roval when you could have just went to the uh oval when we already know how to set up for that you know what i mean i don't want d1 to waste that and I think trucks were going to be too slow for the Roval, typically. Um, so, yeah, we decided to, say, to take D2 there. We'll see how it goes. Um, stuff like that. Supreme Defend. Um, yeah. Um, what other tracks are there? We, we don't need to talk about Scorcher. 
Um, yeah. Well, anyway, Washington. Maryland. Back to Maryland. Um, Maryland's obviously a big complex now. It's a very big complex. There's grandstands. It's wider. It's a, got a better pit road. It's got, like, a full paved apron. Um, again, as, a, or as Tarina said, it's supposed to be, like, a fast but tighter, spread out, flat, short track. Um, and I like that. We don't have any tracks like that, really. So I think it was good to do that. And obviously, you're going to have some battles for the lead and stuff like that. Uh, oh, shit. I, I remember what I was going to say about Kentucky. I, this always happens. Okay. So back to Kentucky Oval. Always. I always remember in the middle of con- conversation. I don't know why. Like, so back to Kentucky real quick. So as I, as I said, we don't want two or three second gaps between first, second, third, fourth, yada, yada. Um, because that'd just be completely a snooze fest. Kentucky, obviously you're supposed to have good restarts for one to three laps, you know, have some good battles, but then it gets spread out because, you know, it's a flat, tight track, especially at fast speeds. Napa dropped sponsorship of Hendrick Motorsports and Chase Elliott. No, they did not. I hope you realize that. You're trying to trick me or something because, no, they did not. He was at the Expo Center. Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon went up onto a stage or something and announced they would extend extend the contract. Napa extend sponsorship. Of Thank Hendrick you. Motorsports Chase Elliott. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so back to the Kentucky thing. What I kind of wanted to be more like, obviously strategic, as I said, it just not that spread out. But what it would, what I think would be kind of cool, is I I know if you guys know this well. Well. I don't know if Torino does, but Miami last season, it wasn't like a super speedway race, but it was sp- it was spread out like three to five seconds and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's, it's going to be a snooze fest. But no, it broke into multiple packs. It broke into packs where you'd be like a one to five car pack, like eight seconds ahead of another one, and then five seconds ahead of another one. It was pack, pack, and pack racing. There was one pack, two pack, three pack. That's what Miami was. And I think that's why Miami was actually a really good race last season. Because it was more pack racing than it was a spread out race. Because it looked like it was going to turn into a very bad snooze fest. Like Kansas in 2021 in the Cup Series. Or 2020 in the Cup Series. Where it's all like three to five second gaps between every single race car. No, that's what it looked like it was going to turn out to. But Uh, no, it turned out... Yeah, Miami was good. It It broke into several packs instead of several cars. That's why I think Miami was actually a really good race. And that's kind of how Kentucky is meant to be. Um, and it was a top speed uh, that was so high you could basically full throttle the track. Yeah, because Aska Miami is very high banked. Like, it's hard to get a car that isn't too grippy. Like, these are like IndyCar grippy at a, to an extent with speed. Like... Forza says Maryland is definitely the most non-road course skill, skillful track on the schedule, and I can wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly agree uh, that I made the track. Yeah. I know the ins and outs of mm-hmm. well, I know the ins and outs of that track, but I don't know enough of it, and I haven't been too good at it. So it, that's the... be, it, it was great for Frando and Forza, but it wasn't great for me or or uh, the rest. And that is the main reason we do. I honestly, I'm and, glad. And it's, all about, it's all about consistency. Um, I was consistent in like the first couple 40 laps when I started messing up, when I got pissed, and um, yeah. and I started screwing up. And, it, at, and it's just just all about making sure you hit your marks, you hit your marks correctly, and uh, each and every single lap. Um, yeah. With the pitch strategy included, of course. I'm glad drivers voted Maryland for the championship because that is probably the best track as in skill that we can have for a championship. I don't want an R I don't want a road course as a championship. That's stupid. We well, want no. an oval as a championship. This is a that's like NASCAR. This is a oval primary series. You want the large, very large majority of the season to be ovals. You know, NASCAR doesn't do that anymore. Well they do but they don't. Anyway. Um so yeah, Maryland is definitely the best championship track. Yes, it may be a more it may be a more boring championship or a weird championship, but it actually shows skill. And I'm not saying every track doesn't, but this shows definitely the most skill by, I'd say, a pretty good amount over every other track besides, or every other oval. So I think Maryland's a perfect championship. As Forza said, it's a track 
that you cannot afford mistakes because if you, you lock up, if you no. make a mistake, you're all lap down. Especially when you hit the wall and you get loose because you, know, you hit yeah. the wall, you get loose. Or you get tied to lock up. And it's a .6 mile track. It's a short track. Any track like .4 to .8 miles is one you definitely do not want to screw up at. Especially yeah, close. Way, even, it's, a, even a pit road mistake. Go especially on. the worst times to do this is either early in a run or late in a run. If you lock up, I would say it's best to do in the middle of a green flag run. Not at the beginning of a run, like a restart, or when you get really long in a green flag run. Because if you get really long in a green flag run, the whole field is split out, and there's normally one to five cars lapped already. Which that means if you really mess up, that leader can be on your ass in a second. And it's also bad in a in the beginning of a green flag run because everyone is right by you. So if you mess up, you either get people mad at you, you wreck them, or you fall through the whole pack to the back where you cannot catch up. So it just hurts you in the long run. So I'd say it's best to mess up in the mid in the mid run, mid green flag run. Early and late is the worst for Merrill. And think about this: before the track was before Maryland, the track was named Hydro. And when it was first introduced to trucks, man, the track that you're seeing, to, the track that you were seeing, the track that people were seeing, right, the NAPRO community was seeing right now, that was not the track that it no. looked like when it, was, when it was named Hydro. That track was even shorter, and it was even narrower. So people had to jump on me saying, uh, um, make the track wider, make the track wider, so there's uh, more space for runs. Because when, um, and even when trucks raced there, it was not as, it was not as uh, narrow as narrow as um, it was pretty narrow um, compared to what to what is there today. Yeah, and about a yeah about a week ago, I tried looking for the old truck um, stream, and that wasn't necessarily a bad race. Obviously, Maryland Maryland now is better than it was back then, but that truck race wasn't necessarily bad. Um, and I want to say this right now. Give Torino full credit. I obviously, I may have been the one to say add a little more banking or fix pit road or whatever, but it's his track. This isn't one we came up with together. He already had this track. This is the one track. This track is like the front. It's like the front track of SMI is probably like Bristol. The main homepage track of Barrow Brian, you know, me and Torino's track thing, is Maryland because this track started it all with editing tracks and everything. This is the one with custom tracks. This track started everything as in track directors. So this is probably the most important track we have, if I'm not going to lie, I would say. That was the first track, the first uh, custom track that that, um, that, that was introduced um, to, 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 the Nap, to the NAPRA community, and then yeah. Scorcher and, and, and so forth, and, yes. um, and then Ohio and whatnot. And I'm going to be truthfully honest, I don't know how good Ohio is going to be. Um, it's and a flat, that, it's that, a flat, like, one mile track. Um, and I'm hoping people use that, I'm hoping people use that dog like that, um, that was added in. If not, then what's the point? Yeah. So, um. So is, so is this basically another Phoenix? Yes, yeah, but with mix, it's. Oh, with a mix of Pocono, kind of. What I'm hearing is basically Phoenix. What I want to say is. So Torino, there's a big apron, like a big yellow line. I say you, I'd say it'd be better to cut below, to be able to run below the line. I would say it's best to do that. Um, but it depends what you think. I think it'd make the, I think it'd make the, I think it'd make the racing better if you were allowed to run below. Um, we do have to do tests on that, by the way. We're pretty far out from that track racing, and we haven't done an incredible amount of tests. Um. So the track yeah, may you know, the right. track may get edited a decent amount before um, everything. That's why we haven't revealed the track. We haven't really revealed it. We haven't revealed crap for the track. All we revealed was like the front stretch. That's all. Um, we haven't revealed anything else, and that's why because we haven't done incredible round tests. And if we need to make it better, we definitely will before that race. So. Oh, yeah. Let's look at Ohio. Oh, that's basically Phoenix. Yeah, so you can see there's a big apron, and it's a very flat racetrack. Um, 
literally Phoenix. I tell it's you, it's got a, gonna... it's a, like one mile flat track, very very similar to Phoenix, but it's got corners like Darlington. So it's a mix. It's a mix of like a unique track, Darlington, and um, what was it? Phoenix and one. Um, yeah, that, that's what I was uh, saying. Uh, it's a bit of Phoenix with a mix of Pocono. And, yeah. Uh, banking is a bit higher or a bit lower. I'm, I don't remember than Maryland. Um, yeah, it, it's a slight bit lower than Maryland. Not by much though. And yeah, here's this uh, this dog leg. It may look a lot lower um, than Maryland. That's obviously because it's a long, it's a larger track and it's wider. So it's going to look, you know, it's going to look like a rain. So, yeah, we made a pretty good dog leg, a pretty big one. So and that's for sure an area you can cut below the yellow. I say make it legal everywhere besides, like, the back and front stretch. Like, in the corners, just make it legal. And a besides, lot of people forgot about I don't really trip. know, to be honest. Hold on, let me stop streaming real quick. A lot of people forgot about uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas is yeah, a dog leg. Vegas. And I don't, we're not actually racing Vegas, I don't think. Maybe. I don't know if we put it. I'm not 100% sure. I thought we put it in there. Yeah, we put it in there. Last time, that's the last time I remember it being in there. Portland, okay. Maryland, Kansas, Kentucky, Watkins, Michigan, Michigan, yeah, North Coast Squirrels, Culture. Yeah, nope, not in there anymore. Well, we could get it in there, possibly. We'll do tests, see if it's good enough, and we'll leave it in. May just replace um, Portland with that. I don't even know where you're going to replace Portland. I can replace anyway, Portland with that, actually. Show show Vegas. Let's see Vegas. We never we never really showed off Vegas, either. So we've now showed off Ohio, and now we're going to show off Vegas, and that's if people watch for a racing home. This is going to take so long to upload, dude. This is going to take, like, freaking three, four hours, five hours. I uploaded three videos that were, like, a half hour, and they took, like, three hours, and this is already at 42 minutes. So guys, this is Phoenix, or Phoenix, fucking hell, Vegas. So Vegas was never really a good track for us. Oh my god, they still have the freaking Gen, the Gen 7s here? Yeah, the old, the old, old, old Gen 4. I, I honestly find those cars nostalgic now, for some reason. Like, I find, Anyways, them, I find them nostalgic. We all, we all go over. Now. It's yeah, it's blue. blue instead of yeah. red. Dupont red. It's not Dupont red anymore. I love my, I love blue. Why not make it purple? I like purple. I love. Purple. No. No, I think purple oh, would be oh, a really cool track, to be honest. Then we have the chance. Then we have the chance sponsorship to like. Uh, then we have the Actually, hey, 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 hey. That's what um, that is exactly what we could do with um, Scorcher Torino, because who inspire who inspired sponsors that, and that's purple. Anyway, um, show yeah, the dog leg, the dog show leg. the layout, the huge like diamond shaped track. I, I, I call it. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me explain. 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 Okay, so this is when I was new to uh, to, to making dog legs. This this was my first time making dog legs, and I told. I got the peach, bro. I told I told I told uh Ford this. Um in more explicit terms, it kinda looks like a gaping pussy. <laughs> That's crazy. So Wait, what, what the f why why just why? Why? Why does it I, I tested it out I tested it out a few times and experimentation it, it looked to be uh it looked to be effective. So you go all over here and yeah, the back stretch has been edited a little bit. Yeah. Anyways, go over there gotta make a little right left turn and then you gotta go over here and then a sharp left turn go under and then as you said you can slide up like so i'm, I'm not allowed. I, I feel like i feel like for bro. some reason i feel like for some reason oh this God. track if it was if this track was a thing in real life like they edited vegas exactly like this i feel like it would turn closer to a pack race than it would a spread out one because i feel like course, everyone so would run the same line <laughs> I feel like everyone will run the same line on the dog way and be going like 180. Oh, run my line car, bro. Or is it called it stupid? 
<laughs> it is stupid though. Why would you ruin a, a, a decent track? Why like, do you yeah, think we didn't it, reveal it this? It was around no, the first time when I was new to make dog legs and but Ford and I were extremely interested. Let me get up to speed here. Okay, and one thing. Let's say this one more time. And oh, oh these are these yeah, these are the full throttle cars, by the way, that we used for Vegas last season. I wanna say one thing. Or two things. One um, obviously, we're, we can change this, especially if it's not on the schedule, to, like, the playoffs. We can change this track. We can change it all We can change it back to what it was. Who knows? We can change it anything. We'd have to find the original file, by the way, because it's too late. Oh, well, yeah. Ain't doing it. And we, I'm not saying we're going to, or we have to. Hey, man, you know what? Just add dog legs to every single track. Oh, okay. no, we ain't doing that. We only, we only added dog legs to, there are only two dog leg tracks. Calm down. Three. Well, actually, Atlanta doesn't necessarily count because it's just oh, a wide. Oh, three dogleg tracks. I forgot about that. I don't that. understand the point of dogleg, bro. Just leave the mountain has like how they are. Atlanta doesn't. Okay, and that's the second thing I was going to go to. Vegas was never a real, real good track for us. It wasn't bad when it was full throttle, but that's the point of Kansas. No, I'm saying in any season, it was never really that good of a track for us. It was good, probably for a total of 100 laps out of, like, 400 laps that have been right now. Half of that was full throttle, half of that was season two. It was never that good of a track. And it was a track we weren't even going to put on the schedule, but we wanted to see what type of experimental edits we're going to make on it. Just yes, keep it makes... season, Just keep the season four Atlanta. That was the better Atlanta, if I'm being honest, season four. I'm, I'm talking about change. Vegas. What the dog leg Atlanta? That well, was actually that good. The big dog leg at the front stretch. That was actually good. That was the first good Atlanta race we had for like a year. Oh shit! I remember that race. I had a good long ride, the best long run car, no cap. And that brings me to the other thing. I don't necessarily count Atlanta as a dog leg because all it is is just the front stretch wider. It's just a wider front stretch. Like that's all it is. It's the whole front stretch, pretty much. It's wide. It's not like just one corner, like Atlanta, or not Atlanta. Fucking, <laughs> it's not just like one corner, like Phoenix and Ohio. It is, all the pretty much the whole front stretch. So I wouldn't really count Atlanta as a dog leg. Hey bro, just um, keep, keep it. Atlanta was good. Just keep it. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, we're not changing Atlanta. We're not changing Atlanta. We're not changing Atlanta. Don't we all love Texas Motor Speedway? Oh, really? God, no. No. <laughs> I'm in was... that track right now. We're I'm not going to lie. Texas. I'm not going to lie. I don't think the All-Star race was bad, to be honest. I... Like to be honest, I don't think the Texas All-Star race we had was that bad, the last one. I think... I don't think it was incredibly bad, to be honest. Um, uh, I didn't really like it. If I'm being but honest. I don't think it was worth keeping on the schedule, and that's why it's not here. It's not on the schedule. Texas is not on the schedule? No. No, it isn't. We're we make trying. Texas full throttle, bro. No, okay. Texas, the what first the Texas All-Star Race. The, first place? the season, listen, the season three Texas All-Star Race was the best race we've had at Texas, and it really was actually pretty good. But then this season, or last season, it wasn't really that good. That was when Fusion won the All-Star. No, it, it was a big points battle. Like, if King finished one position higher, they would have tied. It was when we still ran the Dodge Chargers. Um, no, I'm I'm saying two seasons ago, season three, season four, Snow won it. The season before, when Fusion was in a Dodge Charger, that's what I'm talking about. That's when it was really good. But Snow, oh yeah, Fusion did win the race too. I know why. I forgot about that. Fusion won the race, but Snow won the championship, right? Or not championship, also race. I think I don't know. He won it in points. Yeah. Fusion won the race. So he won it twice in a row. He just won the All Star race the season beforehand. Anyway, so it, where's the All Star race gonna be at this year? Michigan. Sh no, Chicago. Oh, Chicago. 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 Michigan. Oh, Chicago. No, Chicago. Chicago. Chicago landed was really good last season. That was one of the better oh, mile and a half. Couldn't say that because I wasn't there. That was literally the only race that I missed last season. That was the best mile and a half race I ever raced in this season or in this league since like season two. Like, I did insanely uh, good there. Same as Zach. Did you make the All-Star Race a road course? No. Like, hell no. Like, 
<laughs> like, we haven't read this in Noble yet. Wait, we haven't read the they told a rope course in it since season two. Yeah, we need to go that was, that was because that was because somehow the base plates got messed up, so we managed to fix that. So I was I was letting Ford know one, one, as soon as that got fixed. Oh, hey, maybe, hey, maybe bring we up, could bring race the on a rope course. Torino, bring up, bring up the thing. And I actually like this idea. No, I'm not a thing for technology, especially in NASCAR, or mainly in NASCAR. Bring up that thing about the adjustable spoiler, like a supercar. Oh, oh, yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah, I love yeah, that. Oh, yeah. I love I was, that idea. I was uh, thinking like 30 years from now when if, if, techno if, if technology has its next boom, um, like 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 if we race at the Daytona Road Course or something, where you because you got to because usually they switch from they switch from uh, uh, super they switch they go on the super speedway for a couple for, for like a turn or two and then they go on the road course. I was thinking like. Um, as soon as you go, if you're coming off of the super speedway, going into the road course, your spoilers would retract, and it would change into a road course-based car. And as you're going out of the road course, going onto the super speedway banking, speeding up, your spoiler would go up, and it would change into a uh, 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 into a super speedway package. Um, I, what, just... No, okay, let me, okay, I'll try to explain it. So what he's saying... Is at a so in the road course you're not really going any faster than maybe 130 mile an hour, right? So when you go into the road course when you're going under 130, your spoiler goes to like let's say four inches or like low downforce, a low downforce like four inch spoiler or whatever. Um, in the road course and then once you get up to like 130 or so coming out of the road course onto the super speedway like the banking, it goes up to like eight inches once you reach like 140 150 miles an hour. I have a better idea. How much so it goes to higher depth. Four inches. It's in the middle. Four inches. Just keep it at four. We're not talking about the leaker NASCAR now. We're talking about in 30 years. 30 years. I'm just saying hey, it'd be kind of cool. When, because it, 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 super. Technology has its next boom. Yeah. Yeah. Because supercars. It actually, you could probably do it now. I'm not going to lie to you now. It's not to have a big boom in the next 20 years. That's, that's, that's crazy to not think that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Technology gonna have a next boom in the next twenty years. Supercars, supercar spoilers on some supercars. If you get up to like one hundred fifty or more, they will either like change height or change like angles. And then if you're if you're braking, like you're braking really fast or really hard, your spoiler on some supercars goes straight up like a ducktail spoiler. They'll go from like a Honda Civic spoiler to like a NASCAR spoiler. They'll just go straight at an angle, a steep spoiler, and it helps downforce and it helps you stop quicker. Like that's what we're talking about, just not like that. We're just talking retracting in and, ba or in and back out, in and back out, not different angles and everything like that. Like honestly, I'm not even gonna lie, Torino, you could probably make a spoiler like that now. I'm not even gonna lie. Like all it's doing is just pushing the spoiler back up and back down. It's not like angling it. Um. So, is there any other tracks we need to talk about? Atlanta's not new news. The rest, the rest, uh... Oh, talk about Portland, bro. What about what? There's now? not really much about Portland. We didn't change anything, dude. Oh, Portland, yeah. Portland might get eliminated. Yeah. yeah other, don't other eliminate that, the World Force. Don't eliminate it's the World Force. No, 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 listen, and, it's and, narrow as hell. We're, we're it's getting like rid of it. We might get rid of it because we can't find, we can't get good setups there. You've been okay, replace it with another road course. Just replace it with another road course, please. And what, and what road course do, would, would you have? Sonoma. No, Sonoma's gonna be hell. It's like Circuit of the Americas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, let's go to Le Mans. Let's go to Le Mans, boys. <laughs> Nah, don't go to Okay, how about this? Just how about let's go to a Roval, Charlotte Roval. We have never oh read the no. Charlotte no, Roval. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. No. Oh, you know how hard that would be. We have uh, never read the Charlotte Roval. Supreme, I love to read the Charlotte Roval. Supreme, Supreme. Shh, I've sure. actually looked into Charlotte Roval's um, ASCA tracks and other uh, tracks that 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 were publicly available, and they weren't that good. I'm I'm gonna be 100% honest right here. I would I would, honestly I don't like it in real life that much, but I wouldn't mind Charlotte Roval in the league. But the issue with that, it is it's not like Kentucky. Kentucky we don't have an, a bunch of tight corners, and if we do, we have a lot of room. Charlotte Roval is a insanely tight or not insane. It's a very tight road course that's decently narrow throughout the whole infield. Kentucky is wider corners, not so yeah, sharp. Yeah, because you customly made it. Yes, I'm, uh, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying we, we were doing Kentucky Roval instead of Charlotte because Charlotte's too tight. Okay, how about this? It's, how about making like, another Roval like no. in Las Vegas? Or no, no. Like, 
We can't remove. Look, we can't just have like one road course per year. Okay. Well, we initially, like initially, what I was saying, besides if we replace Portland, what I was saying was besides Vegas and everything. And this is gonna be a hard decision. But I was gonna say if the Roval race goes well at D2, I was gonna say do you have the other division swap. So you D2 is the only one that runs a Roval now. So then, by the time we get to Portland, D1 and D3 would run the road course, or the Roval, and D2 would run the Kentucky Oval. So I was thinking of having Kentucky twice, one for the Oval for two divisions, one for the Roval for two divisions. So they all race both configurations. Okay, let me let me uh, get up the, what you call it. Let me start streaming here. But the Charlotte Roval, and I thought about adding it. The Charlotte okay, so Roval here, is just a tight This, this, this okay. is a public ask a track. Um, public ask a Charlotte Roval, uh, which, which looks identical to the one that we that that we raced in uh, throughout the, the whole day. Yeah. So, you know, you got the Coke 600. You're going over here. Um, you're going into the Kevin Harvick wall. Look <laughs> at this. How the oh, hell are you going to make that turn? Look. Think about it. I mean, you you can. That's narrow as shit. Listen, hey, listen. Bro, that's a two-car two hey, lane right hey, there. Who cares? Hey, hey, no. All you got to do is extend that wall back out. At the entrance, it's bowed out. The wall's bowed out with the tires, see? You can extend that. Better idea. The Keep spectrum it as wall. It is, people are going to blow the turn anyway, so it's going to be single file either way. So I'm not saying, look, 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 no, Torino, what you can do, you see how the end of the spectrum wall is aligned with that white line? On the exit of the road. This? It's yes, it's out. a line. See? The see where it's bowed out right there. It goes to the right where it makes it narrow. You can just move that in to match the white line as well. So you have like a five, six car length wide corner. But then it goes okay. down to like two. Like Daytona Actually, Road I, Course. I'm in the Listen, wharf right now. It could go like Daytona Road Course. So, you know, in like turn one of the road course, it's very wide, but then it goes to narrow right away. That's how it can be. Dude, Ben, let's just let's just make this happen. Let's add the Charlotte Roval. Let's just make this happen. What the hell are those red lines? I've never had those. Like, it'd be sure very the, hard to make. Pretty sure that's the z-axis. Yeah, that's the z-axis. I don't know. Two cars, maybe. You could fit two no, three, cars. three cars. Can definitely fit that. Three cars can definitely fit. That. But then not, they get not successful. It. And think about this: you're coming on the pit road. No. Well, that you be you could slow down. Listen, and... listen, get yes. rid of pit road right there. Just get rid of it. Just get put a burn. Pit. Just it's, you know where that wall bends. You see where the wall bends? The blue wall. Yeah. This. That splits that splits pit road in the actual racing, you know, configuration. You can just delete that and replace that line right there with a burn. So if, if someone comes out of pit road and drives over the berm, then it's a penalty. You know what I mean? So replace that blue wall with the berm. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't mind trying to make the roval happen, but it's just it's such a tight road course that I don't think it'd work out that well. It's like Circuit of the Americas in Portland. Portland is a narrow, short, tight road course. Like, it's probably, I'm pretty sure it's... I think it's actually a little bit shorter no, than the Charlotte Road. Are, are y'all expecting to be like packs or where? Like, we should like. I'm being honest. There's no way that we're gonna have like multiple packs. They're gonna be at packs at once because so everyone's where? gonna blow. Where? Where? Course. Everyone's gonna blow road courses. Oh, no, Roval. Uh, turns. We're not, well, road courses aren't <laughs> meant for packs. So what's the problem with a tight rope, a narrow rope course? There's not going to be packs. What, if what people, we, if, if people, like one person goes by, listen, and another person goes by, and then it's like occasionally the two car pack that's eventually going to break up anyways because someone's going to screw up the turn. What do you think the Charlotte Roval in this league would be like? It's going to be like that. It's going to be there. There may be packs, but I would say it's a better chance to bet on more spread out cars. Like a 2020 mile and a half race in your life. That's how I think it would turn out to be. And I'm not saying that's bad for a road course, um, especially the Roval. But it's just, I don't, I think people would screw it up too much. Make it a shithole. Caution after caution. I, I know you don't have caution all the time on a road course. But I think it'd be caution uh, after caution. Or, or, or what do we call a caution for that? 
And why is that the old Roval? That's not even the correct Oval. Roval. That's the old Roval, isn't it? Or no? It doesn't have... It run the same configuration for the past four years. Never mind. Nah, have you seen the 2018 Roval? It's the, it's the right one. Never mind. The 2018 Roval was horrible. No, I just personally think... Like, I would... I think it'd be fun to try to get the Roval to work, but I don't think it's going to work well enough, to be honest. Like, I think Portland would... Well... I honestly think the Roval would be a little bit better than Portland. But I could see Portland being easier to at least make corners. The hell is Monza? Hey, I'm, I'm going to go Monza Oval. Monza Oval? Monza Oval? Okay, what else do we do? Okay, we're done with tracks. Now, should we talk about short predictions for the season? I know it's only two, season, two races what? in. But... Oh shoot! I already had my predictions, and golly, I, I think I uh, think um, I'm gonna say this right now. I think Frando will be a champ threat. I'm not gonna lie. Let me, find, let me find my predictions real quick. Let me let me find it real quick. I think the rookie Frando will be a championship player. He did good in speed weeks. He did incredible in Maryland, and yeah, and he said he does really good in mile and a half. And I I think I've seen him in a game once. Fuck, I forgot what league was. It was some league. I'm pretty sure. He um. Maybe it wasn't Lee. I know, it was somewhere. I saw him, and he did really good at a mile and a half. So, I think he's a, he's at least a pl round of six, uh, round of eight threat. He's definitely a playoff threat. Um, I'd say he'll finish anywhere from fourth to sixth in points. I don't think he'll win the championship, but I think he can make it. I think it'll take him another season before he can will win the championship or can. So. Um, oh, there it goes. There's my predictions yeah. right there. The predictions. So this was like, I think this was a week before the season started. Okay, so let's yeah. look at Supremes Those are mine. Here. playoff predictions. So he says D3 playoff drivers. Uh, he says Money, Ultra, Commander, Chris Muffin. Who's the cat? Who's the, who's why is there a cat in the middle or a dog or whatever? Oh, Hellhound. I think that's. Oh, is that supposed to be how long? No. Yeah, that's Hound. He drives the five. He okay. Anyway. Five. So Hellhound, five. Eric, London, and Gibby. And his championship four is Money. And I, I think Money will. Money is a very... Um, he's raced in D1. He did pretty good. And then D2, he did incredible. But then he was just race time. If it wasn't for race times, I bet you he'd be in D1. So yep. he just had to go down to three, D3. So his championship four prediction is Money, Ultra, Kurt Buffin, and Commander. Uh, and his winner is Money. I mean, I think I think Money will win the championship. Um, then his D2 playoff predictions, Real Boy. I'm going to say Real Boy's going to win the championship. I'm like, I didn't even read what he said, but I think it's only Real Boy. He's one of the greatest drivers we've had in any division. Um, and Brian, Adam, Marky, Deer, Sup NASCAR, King, and Ad. His championship four is Brian, Deer, Real Boy, and King. And I know Deer's going to go as aggressive as hell. Him and Be I swear to God, him and Beast are the same freaking person. They sound the same. They One's act the gay. same. Watch this guy. I swear to God, Deer and, Be and Beast are the same person. So, you know, Deer's going to be aggressive. He's like Beast. He's going to be aggressive. Um, real boy, he's going to be aggressive but logical. Very logical. And then King. I King and Brian, I don't know enough about them to know how they're going to drive. Same with D3. Um, besides money, he's going to be pretty aggressive. D1 playoff drivers, he's got Forza, Supreme, Torino, Teal, Zack, Snow, Beast, and Joey. Which I was on there. Fucking can't race full time anymore. Um, his championship four is Forza, Supreme, Torino, and Snowbreaker. And that, you know, that is Star... Or Star Fraud, fuck. Blaze Technology versus STP Racing right there. I'll say that Season 2 championship was Bear versus STP. It was two STP, STP, two Bear. Um, so his winner is any BTM driver. So he's not himself. I would honestly go out on a limb and say Torino or Snow. Oh, uh, for, for winning the championship? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this right now. Take your bets off me unless if I can find somewhere uh, to get better at, um, at Maryland. Otherwise, I am not... I I would not be uh I would not I would not be a logic choice. Um it's uh as soon as I 
lock up and mess up, I just get out of that consistency, and um, I can try and find a uh, Torino by the fuck a fanboy to <laughs> give himself motivation. To I could do that actually. You know, I should I should download Tinder and uh, see if there's a uh, some fanboys I can hook up with and uh, oh. do my thing. Anyways, 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 that's not the topic. Um, right now, realistically, you're gonna have to look at people who, uh, who, uh, and uh, yes, of course, we just two races this season, and those two, the the only one was based on skill. Daytona, Daytona, anything can happen. Um, mm. But uh, um, a after after a while, um, he, um, after a while, where um, we've raced like eight races or so, we get to see. Uh, specific drivers where um, if they, they didn't do too good at one race racetrack or they did amazingly uh, great at one track for example I kicked ass at Rich uh, I kicked ass at um, at Richmond Indy 2 but I sucked ass at Darlington yeah so um, um, when you look when you look into uh, which specific driver performs well um, then, then you could get a a, a, a logical and valid uh, prediction. Otherwise, uh, but but point to point to say is until I find some way uh, to to figure out what Marks Forza is doing, what line Forza is doing, and what line Frando's doing, pitch strategy. I'm already good on pitch strategy. It's just the consistency and staying consistent, uh, trying to get trying to figure out who's making those good marks and trying to replicate off of them and maybe do it better and um and mm. and hopefully get that clutch but until that happens um i'm uh i'm, I'm not uh I'm, I'm kind of uh not not a good not a good uh championship pick i'm gonna make the playoffs that's for sure but uh may most likely the championship four if uh if i am pretty active of course and um but but winning the championship I don't think, especially since it's Maryland, I don't think uh, I don't think that would be a good good uh, pick for anybody um, until I uh, until I step up and um, figure out what what I can do. Otherwise, I'm hoping Maryland gets uh, voted to be the next check for the championship next year, and um, so so maybe we could keep that keep that streak going for uh, for Maryland being the the most uh, uh, the commonly selected track for the championship. Yeah, and it's only like it's only the third track to be a championship track because season one and two is Darlington um, season three and four were Charlotte and Charlotte wasn't really that bad I think it was actually really good I think it's a good championship track um, but I think Maryland is I think I think as an entertainment Charlotte and Darlington are better especially Charlotte but I think as an actual skill and strategy Maryland is best um, I want to say this right now. You would not have me making the playoffs. Okay, I know last season I had one win, but look how far I got. I missed how many races? I would say four races at least. Yeah, because your goddamn friend was coming over. No. From, from, from fucking living uh, next door. So, so that's why. <laughs> no, that's why not last season. Up the races. Okay, anyway, I missed like at least three races last season for sure. Um, and I, yes, I only got one win, but I was, again, like Chase Elliott in 2017, I was consistent, but not in wins. So, so like he was at the beginning of this season in 2022, consistent, just not in wins, just could not pull one off. And I pulled one off nearly two, but you know, just fucking North Wilkesboro, <laughs> dominated the whole goddamn race. I think I did actually... I didn't do as good as I thought I did last, or I would have last season, but I did do good at a number of tracks. Dover is obviously my biggest one, and I, I think I actually left halfway through the, or the race. Why am I talking about, wait. Who would Never mind, I would, I was getting messed up. Bears falling off a cliff because no one fucking drives in D1. No one Adam, drives Adam, a bear in D1. D, D, D uh, Joey's jo the only, uh, I would consider Joey the ambassador for Bear. Joey and Balling are both, I don't want to say mediocre, but it's kind of, they're the slightly below average to average drivers. Joey's got loyalty to me, but 
he's been shitty so far this season. Obviously, it's only been two weeks, and he did make the 500. But yeah, only la- point, he only point and, and I will say this. I will say this. He DM'd me right away. I just didn't see it. Right when he left, he said, "Sorry, my lag is just so bad." And that's a, that's a that's a thing at Daytona for us, especially that Maryland and um, there was one more track where lag. Don't bad. get any ideas here. <laughs> so Joey's been loyal to him. He tells me when something's wrong, or not when something's wrong when he leaves or something. Um, Ballin, he just isn't really active. Adam wasn't really active for his last season, and he moved down to D two. Which I think was honestly better because of activity. I didn't want to waste a D1 spot. I'm part time for three races this season, but that doesn't mean shit. Um, and there's just no D1 driver like I am I will say this I tried playing the system because I specifically asked executives. I asked you guys, it didn't, it didn't really piss me off. You guys like changed your mind right away. So I asked you guys, so we're still allowed to take a driver from D3 or D2 that would just sign and put them in D1 since you technically signed them to that division, but you move them up after a race. And you guys said, yeah, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to do that with Eric. And I was going to move him up to D1 right away in the 48. But then you decided to change your mind. You guys, like, five minutes before DM with that, I'm like, shit. So now he's got to race, what, is it half season now? In that division? season before he can be promoted. Is it promoted to any division or just up one? Any division that, that okay. any division that because, So if he's doing really good by the midway season, I probably won't move him up. Because I want him to win the championship. Because if I move him halfway up into D1, and it depends what he wants. If he wants to stay in D3, I'm obviously going to keep him in D3. But if he's doing like if he's like a top five contender, and he's a pretty good contender in D3, I don't want to move him up to D1 just to barely have a chance to win the championship or to even get to it. A very low chance. Actually, what what we can speak about right now is the is the drivers who uh who just aren't there yet. And but 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 uh, hold on. Fusion, Not a fusion th- fella. Man, I don't give a damn about no goddamn black ass XTP Supreme. Y'all ain't gonna succeed. It's, it's all gonna fall down. You gonna look like a clown on top. Anyways, uh, seriously, right um, here, seriously, let let's let let's uh, <laughs> let's let's uh. I'm gonna take a serious approach to this, um, and uh, I'm not being obnoxious here for a second. L- let's talk about the drivers who who uh, who are in the so-called hot seat right now. For example, Panda. Um, I'm not sure if there are any guys in the hot seat for for Bear. Um, there's a. Oh, there's driver. no one on the hot seat for my team right now. I don't even care what and, Panda's uh, doing. Is what Panda doing? He got the pole at Maryland. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> is Panda just gonna be? Is Panda just gonna be the next Austin Dillon? Man, anything, bro. I gave him a one-season contract because you know he's just. I'm not, okay. he's I want to say something real quick. I he do just, not he's know. He's gonna make. The, he's gonna do well just because he's active. I don't know how Panda. Like, keeps only, getting okay, so uh, only I don't know if Beast has anybody in the hot seat right now, but if I'm Beast, I'm probably looking at the. I'm probably looking at Brian, Geo, Gibby, drivers that haven't even made a race, made the race. Let me look personally, personally. Yeah, what happened to those guys? Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Gibby, Geo, oh, Ryan, yeah, Pizza Maker, Rock Pitter. Rock Pitter probably ain't even gonna race at all. Big. Yeah, because he's he's got some ligaments. We races he usually does good. Didn't even but... race D one last weekend at rear. They didn't even race D one. They yeah, race this. They race in this week. Ooh, and I thought that I think oh, that's gonna get postponed too. If I'm being honest, that's why I'm okay. not gonna race. Let me say this real quick. One, I don't get how Panda keeps getting resigned after all that shit. Two, I know if Beast Ross just, I really don't care. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say hard. I'm, I'm not, I'm no hard feelings. I do not think Beast is a great team owner. As in, when we saw him in signings, we don't technically know that yet. But when it came down to signings, he, it's, he didn't really give a shit about signing. And maybe he, he wasn't home or something, you know, but he didn't try signing till the end. He, he started complaining that no one was available when everybody was, when all, when people like. Bear, uh, BTM, and STP and Starboard took up all the drivers. That's that's the thing about signing. You gotta come in early. You can't come in too late. Oh yeah, I had like two messages and a notepad copy and pasted, so I can get a first offer on someone or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I, did, this, I, I, I had to snatch those drivers quickly, bro. I wish I would have got Russ. Not even gonna cap, but he hasn't even raced yet. So you know, I'm kind of glad that I wasn't able to get him because he hasn't even raced yet. No, 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 I take that back. He didn't race Daytona. He didn't race Daytona. Okay, hey, hey, let me say this real quick. I honestly, but like, 
I know Joey made. Didn't Joey make the championship? Or no, yeah, he, he made the championship. Did he? Last, yeah, he did. Year. And he did really good in the playoffs. And he won. Did he win Elwood? Yeah. And he won the same two races last season as he did the season before. He won Elwood and he won the championship track of Charlotte. But he just didn't win the championship. Um. I'd say Joey's best track is Charlotte, to be honest. But no. What I was going to say is, I honestly, at a point, I thought of giving Bear up to someone I trust a lot. Which almost would have been Torino. But then he got tied into the big uh, BTM thing. And I I mean, I don't care. I mean, I honestly think BTM's probably the best place for him at this point. Because him and Forza, he's known Forza more than he has me. So it's like, it's the best thing for him. So the spot was to stay with with with, uh, with Starbrod and and try and yeah. uh, make this uh, make this uh, this uh, Ford uh, this uh, that that uh, that alliance at the time between BTM and Starbrod uh, uh, alliance work and one of that one of those was uh, one of those were included the transition Starbrod's transition to Ford which uh, a couple people did not like so. Uh, unfortunately, it dissolved down to me handing off the baton to Teal and um, and leaving because, you know. Um, uh, yeah. I personally, I, th- I honestly think. Oh yeah, th- um, this wasn't this wasn't this wasn't for this for us. I, no. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus or anything. That was just particularly uh, my idea, just to, uh, just just to add in that that that, so, um, that extra step. Personally, um, I think Torino, you made the best decision there. I mean, Starbrod was good too. You were really good on Starbrod. Um, you had some pretty good teammates, especially Teal. Um, but the issue, I don't think it was Toyota. I think we need a good Toyota team, and I think that's. I actually like Starbrod being Toyota. Why? <laughs> Why? Hey, I can put something in here too. Hold no, on. no, no. I am recording. They see the channel. Do not. Oh, you can, you, can, you can just blur it out for it. No, I'm not. I'm not. No, I cannot blur it out. Are you streaming? No, but I don't have an editing software anymore. Oh, that sucks. And I'm not going to cut out parts of the road racing. It's a podcast. Look, you better you hope YouTube just age sh- restricts it and not take it down. Up. You do not. You don't edit a fucking podcast. It is raw. That's what a podcast is. It is raw. Okay. Back to what I was saying. I think Torino made the best decision he could. Yeah, Starbrod is a good team, and, like, they have good media and everything. But I think, you know, BTM was coming up strong, and they they were strong already. But they were at their peak, and they're probably still at their peak, I would say. They're at their, like, they're at, like, the 2021 Hendrick. Just not quite as good. And Starbrod in D1 is mediocre at best. So... I think it was best to not take that chance with Starbrod and D1. Um, yes, they were loyal to him and everything, but I think it was way better to go to um, BTM when they, he knows D1's good and it's going to be probably the best D1 team for the next one to three seasons um, than to stay with a team that is a risk to run. Like, I'm not trying to say anything against Starbrod, but their D1, um, their Division One team was never good never good um i think it was, was only fusion that was the only average was, fusion was good but he just fell off he fell off in a heartbeat um and they are coming back up i will say that they are getting better now because of teal but i still don't think they're going to be a huge competitor for a championship i'd say give it till next season when we go to well that's actually kind of an announcement Give it till next season when we go to the new Gen 4 remaster, and we'll see what they can do. Obviously, it's a new car. It drives closer to the Gen 3 than the than what it did before when we used it for the first few races in Season 4 for a little bit. Um, but this Gen 4, it's going to be next gen. Very detailed. It's got like reflections. It's got plexiglass with a spoiler, um, like windows. Um, okay. Anyway, it's got like an, it's got a removable, um, underbody, like it's got removable, uh, diffuser, um, stuff like that. So I think give it till next season when we move from the Gen 3, the Gen 3 has been here for a long time. So once we move from the Gen 3, 
to Gen 4, but it's going to be a little more of a learning process, more than what we had the past couple seasons at that point. So I think once we move to that, I think D1 Starrod will be contender for the championship. I think they will. I think it'll be Starrod, VTM, STP, and Ford being STP and Ford, STP and Bear being competitive once again for the championships and all. Yeah, I guess we're just. I guess we're just gonna say uh, Blue Monster Energy Racing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're gonna get anywhere. I really. I don't even. I don't want to say this like I'm like talking shit about them like it's gonna be a comeback story of the century and i don't want that to happen because it'll look bad on me anyway i don't think monster energy racing is going to live past the season i just don't unless it changes ownership i do not you know, know you forgot about milkman season. oh my milkman god yeah, that team did, real, real cap. the only good driver is zach i think they are dead he's, really, he's literally the only racer Dragon Soul and uh, Mitch are literally like dead right well, That's kind of why I didn't bring them up. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot about them because it's only Zach that's really worth anything. Zach's pretty good. Um, so, okay. He's Milkman, not, I'm Forza. not He is Forza. I'm not going to even... This season, it's, and definitely not next season, if, if Milkman is going to win a championship, it'll be this season. Or has a chance at winning one. It'll be this season. Next season, when we go to the new car, I, I think Zach's going to go to a different team. And hell, that may be Starbrot. Starbrot has no drivers right now. He may, if Starbrot does good this season and everything, he may switch over to Starbrot. And I think that'd be the best decision for him. I don't want really to make decisions for him. But I think Zach should just, maybe not shut down Milk, man. Leave Frick, should shut down the team, leave, and uh, join a different team. Preferably, I think... SLP, bro. No, I can do about no goddamn shut SDP. Up. You should sell that bitch. This team has been here for three seasons. We're not shutting out anytime soon. Okay, all, this, all this talking that you're going to be doing is going to bite you in the butt, bro. Because if hold we on. win the championship, if one of our drivers wins up. a championship in <laughs> any division. I deafened. Laugh. Oh I'm going to all of you. <laughs> Aces. Shut Shut up. Up. You don't doubt will, the blue. Don't doubt the blue and red. Don't listen, ever listen, doubt the blue and red. Listen, 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 Supreme. Listen. Here's how it should uh, logically go. He should. He should. Uh, he should sell it. Sell it to somebody. Specifically me. Oh, not you. For it, that I'm a better businessman, bro. Hey, no, you're not. Hey, you that's see me, man. It's a rich white man. That's my fellow. I went from having a oh very good God. team to me be myself, and then I rebuilt my team in the span okay. of two okay. seasons. Anyways, what do you mean, bro? Anyways. Let, let's up. stop. Uh, let's stop. Let's stop. For sake, bro. Shut let's stop. 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 let us stop 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 no, um, no, listen, listen, listen. Nothing against Milk. I like Milk. Like, I don't, I didn't hate him. No, he should not stay there to honor him. Milk left probably three ten times, like Panda. Just not as bad. He left. Yeah, That's yeah, his own fault. Yeah, That's yeah, his okay. fault. He lost his team. That's his fault. I say either shut down Milk or just leave the team and go to Starbrod or SCP. Those are the okay. best two teams you can you go to. SCP for a little team and Starbrod for just... Starbrod's going to have brute force going into next season. That would be, in my opinion, the best move is to go to Starbuck, in my opinion, as Zach. If he decides to, if he decides to uh, give that team to somebody else, who in that team is going to be active, which most likely not, and and is going to be uh, good enough to manage that, has the mental capacity and and stress, and stress capacity or whatever to, uh, to to manage that team. And what it looks unless, like right now, unless, no one, no one in there is active besides unless him. Unless he finds someone. Unless he finds someone. No. No, you cannot. Unless he finds someone, there's no goddamn way that you can give that team to someone um, any better than a fucking ghost. We got fucking light, we got fucking dunder cow over here. Thunder moo, lightning moo, light moo. Okay. Uh, thinking about, has anybody for B, oh, we already been over that. No one, no Personal. one besides Beast himself. Attend, uh, Again, his, back to Beast. I don't think Beast is a good team owner. I don't think he's experienced enough. Give him maybe the rest of the season, 
and probably a quarter next season that he'll know. But I don't think his team's going to last. I don't think he's going to go all the way to next season with the new car. I don't think his team's going to last. I really don't. I don't think Monster Energy Racing. I think Milk, if any team lasts longer, it's Milk Man Motorsports. Because Zach is a slightly better team owner than Milk, or than Beast. And Milk Man Motorsports actually has some traction. They have some history already. They have good finishes. They have wins. So, I mean, that's why I'm saying Milk Man Motorsports would live longer than Monster Energy in my eyes in the foreseeable future. No. We talked about. Every is driver, really, is there drivers, really there, we talked about drivers and uh, talk about drivers and um and and BTM. We talked about drivers and um and STP, I think, and Milkman and all those drivers. Starbroad. Uh, personally, Starbroad's become a more of a family organization. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say that because everybody in every team knows each other. <clears> um, yeah. But, I mean, I I get teal most of teals. Drivers bear are part cannot of bear cannot friends. be any different. They're not a family. They're like a bunch of okay. Eric, Adam, Joey are the only three on my whole team that I necessarily know. Everyone else, fuck no. But dude, first of all, I want to give them a chance. Second of all, there's no one to sign that I know. Biz left a hell of a long time ago. I actually DM'd, or he actually DM'd me like two days ago, asked how I was doing everything. Um, so anyway, so um, yeah, that's my fault. And Panda tried to claim. Yeah, oh yeah. Also, we didn't talk about we didn't uh, we didn't talk about the BTM hot uh, hot seat. Uh, from what I'm seeing right now, the BTM hot seat's uh, Robloxian. He's a good driver. It's just the goddamn internet, man. <laughs> He, it, he always screwed. He, yeah. it, it's always it, it was it was the same thing when he was in uh, D two last year. When he it, said, no, that's fine. He, he, he's good. good. It's just his internet, and and especially when it's at the the times where you gotta lock in and focus, and uh, and it's the times where you gotta go, where he tends to where where his internet tends to say, well, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna I don't really care what happens, and um and that makes people for example um. After uh, Nashville, um, he went under, and I think he disconnected, and his car went fucking sent up and took out the whole field. Mm. And um, money, money was molding, money was molding, money was fucking molding. And I remember Ford having to lock down the chat for like the, the whole last evening because we oh, could, yeah. they could, people were mad at each other. He was just the same. Like that nine o'clock to like nine a.m. the next day. But like um, hours. but um, yeah. If uh, if Robloxian, and uh, we're all we're all, everybody at BTM. I can tell you this right now, it is rooting for him. Um, they're hoping he, we're hoping he does do good and um, yeah. And if not win, then at least be very consistent. Um, he doesn't have to win the championship. Um, and. As I'm seeing right now, he doesn't really have to. Well, of course, if you're consistent and whatnot, you're gonna make the playoffs. But uh, in, in Forza's mind, if, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's all about giving it your best shot and putting in um, the the work when you are available to uh, to try and get good finishes and not uh and also include with with also including not screwing up the field like what happened in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And I want to say something real quick. Um... And if he doesn't, if he doesn't perform um, to to expectations, then oh. someone in two would take take his spot. So, talk about money. I, one thing I never want to do. I never want to go to the drivers' DC when money is not up front. Cause oh good lord, don't mean this in a bad way. He is Kyle Busch in two thousand nine. He is. Complaining after complaining after mad at someone, pissed off at someone, telling them to fuck off, shit like that. Constantly. That is what Maryland was for at least 10 laps. I did. Uh, I did not want to. Not Maryland. You know, you know, Maryland? Too. I think it was. I forgot uh-huh. who it was. Um, the 23. Uh, I forgot the name of him. He drives the 23 truck. He said he hated that track. He hated that Ultra. track. I yeah, he won. he won. Ultra. And he, and he, he won. And he won. I said that. I was like, I heard him complaining about it, I'm like, oh shit, here we go. 
And I'm like, why does he not like it? I mean, it's just, it's just not, it's a skillful track, and then he comes back and wins. And I'm just like, what the hell, man? He came back and won. It's like Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch says, it's ruined, it's dead, it's destroyed, it's done, it's done. When he's just like one lap down, and he has a little bit of damage from backing into the wall, and then he comes just back and wins you win. a second. Hold on, I don't mean to interrupt you. Sir. Just because you win doesn't mean that it's enjoyable to drive. I was well, like, yeah, that. I'm just, yeah. But even if you like, if you if you hate it and you still win, it it, it should boost your mood a little bit, at least. Yeah. Uh. I mean, I hated uh. Wait. I never really had any tracks that I hated and uh, ended up winning at. The tracks that I hated, I usually struggled at. And the tracks that I liked, I usually did good at. Um. I do want to say something quick. Um. And I will say this, talking about the Gen 4 remaster, it will actually be here for the Michigan race here coming up soon. Uh, Michigan will not be using the Gen 3, it will be using that car. And it's going to be the fastest we've ever seen a field go. Like, you can get up to almost 220 mile an hour. It's like Michigan in 2014 in real life, in the Sprint Cup Series. It's going to be that fast. This is going to be a very fast race um, in this car at a very fast race track. So, um, is there really anything else we haven't talked about yet? I think we obviously uh, we had to more, catch up. Uh, we had to catch up on a lot of shit. We got to catch like up on one or two hours. I said obviously we had to catch up on a lot of shit. So this one's longer than our typical weekly one. Because normally we used to do this every one or two weeks. You know about oh, races yeah. and rumors and predictions, but there isn't really any rumors besides you know the Gen Four is coming back for Michigan and all of next season. So the uh, Forza uh, Supreme and if if. Uh... If you don't have any more of your two cents to kick in, I think we can all wrap it up. Is, uh, do you guys it's have anything else to say? Hours. I don't really know what else we can talk about. Is there much? It's been an hour and a half. Like, is there really anything we can talk about? I don't know. I think we talked about everything. Our tracks, drivers. Packages um, are the same. Well, let's just talk know. about us for, for a second. Let's just talk about us. What you mean? No <laughs> man, just anything. Who cares? Well, I, I, uh, I had a great time in bed last night. Oh God! No. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> not that Torino, Torino, not that. Bro. God. As a whole, just our, just our, just us as a personality in the league as a whole. I feel like shit. After, I mean, I, I don't know, um. People know me, I know them, I know most of them, they know who I am, they know what I do. Um, they like me, they answer like me. Answer for real, Torino, answer for real. I have no purpose. Yeah. Yeah. You have no purpose yet, you <laughs> manage the whole group. <laughs> um, well, I'm not a hate individual, I, I but I'm not a necessarily liked individual within the league, and I don't know why. I just got that. Oh, yeah. Here's how I perceive you free. Ford, you're washed. Forza is a dominant driver, and Torino likes to, uh, out teams, especially and you, mine. And you have to get by the butt. Uh, oh, oh, okay, I, I can be a very obnoxious person. <laughs> oh, so can I. I'm yeah, that too. To and Supreme OP. can get for too example, troll. For example, for example, for example. Uh, <laughs> One day we're all gonna see. I was actually yeah. thinking of doing that. Oh my god, really? I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, like if I if I decided to go to college, um, and if if uh, if 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 there wasn't any other way we could I, I could personally afford it, because what, what, what I was trying to get I was trying to get into the uh, into the oil and gas industry, and um, of course, um, the, they're public universities and whatnot, but. Imagine I mean, having an OnlyFans account, bro. Couldn't be me. And uh, personally, that's that's another thing. Like, what do you do afterwards <laughs> when you want to get out of it? Like, you have to for college, example, get a you job, work be... nine to five, and then die working that nine to five job. And that and that's what I, and that's why I didn't. I was because you can make so much money off of OnlyFans. It's just oh, what, what happens. You're, just, you're, basically, you you're giving this. away your body for money. I cannot respect that. And 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 also. People were saying that do do OnlyFans. Um, there's this one famous model named Sky, um, her nickname Skybree, whatever the fuck. She said her plan, once she's made enough money, where she's financially stable to live the rest of her life, she's gonna change her name, move somewhere far away, and start a family. And I don't want to do that. 
I want to get him far, far away. Every hey. part is basically known unless she goes in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's not what I want to do. I want to get a degree, um, work for the company, prep in my field, move up the corporate ladder, and, and be the next person talking to some news anchor while some people love Being me. Being racist on the news. What? Being racist on the news. I could be the next Dave Chappelle, actually. Maybe I, can, maybe I should be a comedian. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to make it all the racially motivated jokes. Okay, I want to say something real quick. Fuck, what's I wanna say? I've been distracted by fucking time. Yeah, Take your time for it. Take your time. <laughs> Always remember that. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, so obviously in the NFA raid, we have a lot of game nights. And yeah. I'm actually. Oh, fuck, I didn't add people to the game night rule. Shit. I didn't do that yet. Um, anyway, I'm gonna so try to. You're gonna that at midnight, bro? Let's do it. Not now. I mean, I wouldn't oh, care. I got like. I know we won't yeah. show up. So, the next game that we're going to have, which I'll try to do tomorrow, um, I'm going to probably record that one. As long as no one says. Oh, we should do NASCAR Game 5, no cap. Nah, we're just doing the normal Roblox games that aren't really NASCAR related. Um, so, I want to do the next game, I'm going to record it. And if you guys like it and want to see more, I'll just record every game night. Because I think Game Nights can be a good thing to upload to YouTube because it shows like we actually care about the community we don't just care for our drivers um uh don't we really people. don't we only just care for our drivers honestly yeah but i mean the community is dead as shit actually there was this one uh bum ass um, coon that was complaining the uh, bum ass coon that was complaining that uh, i was being pinned too many times uh, i'm in other leagues uh, i don't care this league shit anyways and yeah. i'm like boy it, it, if if you don't have the time to commit to, to this league, then why the hell are you here in the first place? And the people who usually get pinged, uh, and, and we, the average pings people usually get in the NAPRA is like three listen, to five, and they, they don't care. They, in fact, they actually want to see what's happening, so they're aware listen, of listen. what's happening and what they can do forward. We know that, but just because you say that to a, fa a fan rank, that doesn't mean you don't care about the community. You're telling them the truth. Don't be here if you don't care. That's just, it's fucking, it's fucking, yeah. I said fucking and freaking. If you don't have the time to commit, then why are the hell you If you don't have the time to commit and you don't want to be here, just leave. It's simple. And this is simple. We care about the... The leave server button for a reason, bro. We care about the community members that care themselves. If they don't care, we don't care about them. We care about the community that cares themselves. If there's active fans, we're not just going to say, shut the fuck up. Like, that, both of our fans are inactive. That's I mean, he, he, had, he had some really active fans like Awuga. I think he's a racer now. He's a driver. Yeah, a racer now. now. What do you mean? Like, out of like the 150 people that we have in this server, like 95% of them are inactive and they just sit there yeah, online, Awuga... not even in the league. Like, if we were to, if we were, if there were a command that said kick all inactive accounts, ban like, like most 90. people in the server. There was one specific fan, specific uh, fan named Awuga. He's from Maryland. Or from near, he was born in New York. He's a here. driver, you ninny. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Now he's a driver. Before yeah. he was a really active fan. He always popped in here. Speaking of him, I got a DM. Because that was the that was the time of the month where a girl would join the roll racing server. Yeah, an underage girl, like twelve or something. And everybody was getting poor. Well, I can't say that. <laughs> I, 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 I had a I had a great I, I, I literally trolled the whole server just announcing that there were girls in the server because, you know, it's a once in a lifetime experience. And they the whole the server went, it lit up. Crazy. And it, was, it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that, and there were 20 motherfuckers in the VC. And I, I, yeah. I, I, I it feels lie. crazy. I remember that. You know what crazy. I was doing? I was sitting in my living room drinking mm -hmm. hot chocolate. And I'm just no, watching you're the still whole thing. Were... Hot chocolate? Yeah, I was, I was. Oh, hot okay. cocoa. I was watching the whole thing just happen. I'm just sitting here like, okay. And she got banned, didn't she? Yeah, she was underage. That don't matter to me. She was just here. Your... Excuse me? I could give a shit less. Excuse me? How often? How often does an underage person in a Discord server get caught? Actually, very quite <laughs> often. Actually. In a, okay, in a small Discord server. Not yeah. that often. They'll probably watch a lot of lowly hentai. 
<laughs> yeah, no need to delete it for us. I just said it out loud. <laughs> Bruh. You know, you know what Lolly is, right? Shut the fuck up. It's Lolly. Oh, and we didn't talk about Nova Coach real quick. Um, we had a repave, and we I had. Lolly. If you guys know. Actually, let me share my screen and search up Lolly real quick. Shh. No. Okay. <laughs> North Wilkesboro. We did some changes since the last time we raced. Normally it's con. Did you add a bit of dog leg? Shut the. Motherfucker. We <laughs> only have three dog legs. Calm down. So in, so in three and four. Um, it used to be concrete on the apron, and we changed that to asphalt because we were repaving the whole thing. Why have just one section of concrete for no reason? Anyway, so we re repaved the whole track. We added more vibrant colors to the walls, um, and we actually made the outer part of the track more like the like 2025 renders or whatever. Um, so it still has a rustic old um, OG look, but it has that more modern, updated, intact look. So. And that wasn't really that much. Yeah, it took me a couple hours to do because I kept fucking screwing up and finding wrong stuff. So not a huge change, really. Nothing different for racing. The racing is no different. Just aesthetics pretty much is all it is. Um, so I think we're good here. I don't think we have anything else to talk about. I think we, we talked about everything. Actually, I think I think everybody should uh, should should run through their uh, their their porn stash. Um, you, know what, you know what I should do? No. I no, should lie. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. I don't have one. I don't have listen, a stash. Listen, listen, listen. I don't either. Listen. After this world racing come up, once we do more, I'm probably gonna live stream, especially ones this long, because I don't need. To, if I live stream, I don't need to worry about uploading them. They they already show up on the channel. They upload right, themselves. This world racing hub is just us rambling about random stuff for like an hour. Well, world racing hub isn't just about the NAPRA entirely. It's okay, about, let's talk about, okay, okay, okay. How about this? Let's talk about uh It's NASCAR in general. Mainly. No, 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 no. Let's talk about uh how they're uh trying to uh, freaking uh I forgot what I forgot I saw something on the news. Oh yeah, they're trying to get rid of gay marriages. Uh how do we feel about that? No, I or, yes, yes, get rid of Let's talk about no, STR. What's STR? No, okay, listen. Listen, I'm not gonna do anything controversial. I already did. I mean I'm just fucking who I am. I'm an American. We're all we're all controversial in a way. So, the Rover Racing Hub is about the NAPRA for the majority, like 70% and 30% real life NASCAR. That's what it is. 70 30. 70% league, 30% uh, uh, NASCAR. Get, we're going to enter real world problems. Let's talk about no, why okay. they're banning gay marriage. That's how I see it. Uh, here's the thing. I'm about to let defend the, myself. Let the people it. love who they want to love. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching this Rover Racing Hub over an hour and a half now so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one